Alrighty, Hacksters, welcome to Throwback Thursday. And I want to show you this thing really fast because we've been having some camera troubles and I think it's dying. And uh, I want to show you uh, before it, uh, so that we can have some nice close-ups. So here is something that I've been working on for Avnet's Centennial. They are 100 years old today, founded in 1921. If you're not familiar, Avnet is a huge distributor of uh, electronic components. They started out in 1921, as I said, Charles Avnet was selling radio parts on something called Radio Row in Manhattan. There apparently used to be various radio rows throughout uh, at least the United States, probably further. So uh, I've created this uh, as a Morse code <laughs> beacon uh, to help you learn Morse code. And you can see this LED flashing. Uh, this is my first time actually putting the whole PCB together and I notice that the buzzer is a little bit weak. It is in fact beeping out Morse code, but it's very hard to hear. If I get it really close to the mic. Maybe you can hear it. Um, but maybe I'll put it back in its prototype later on and you can hear it beeping out Avnet 100 years, which is our hashtag for the centennial. This is designed as a badge, so I wanted it to be as low profile on the front as possible. I'd like future iterations to include surface mount components, so I've also ordered surface mount versions of the ATtiny85 chip that I'm using, as well as this button. I haven't yet found a good, uh, you know, SMD buzzer that would do the job. Uh, and there's some little uh, finicky things about designing this PCB that I thought I would share with you. And in fact, you can find the entire tutorial linked in the description to this video. So again, I just put this together for the first time today and I discovered a disastrous, disastrous problem with it, which is uh, sharp-eyed people may notice that there is a bodge wire, which is actually just a a lead from a resistor or something going from the ground of the uh, SMD, <laughs> of the footprint of this SMD uh, CR2032 coin cell battery holder uh, to the ground pin of the chip in an extremely bodgy way. I literally just sort of melted through the socket for the uh, chip with my soldering iron. Actually, that would have been much easier if I didn't... Uh, use a socket and just apply the chip directly. But uh, I'm still testing this, as you can tell. So um, yeah, <laughs> next version is gonna have um, an actual routing connection there. And uh, also, this is my first time doing a shine through LED. Now this worked really nicely. So I ordered these PCBs from JLC PCB. And I was really pleased this morning when I opened up the box to see how translucent the PCB substrate is. You can see the light through it. That's exactly what I was going for. These are actually regular LEDs, uh, surface mount LEDs, uh, 1206 size, that I've just soldered on with big globs. So uh, when you get a surface mount LED, it's sort of flat on the bottom, and that's where the contacts are. But you can still apply a large glob of solder to sort of connect it and then it shines through the board and that just looks really beautiful. I'm really pleased with how this came out. The fact that there's only one thing wrong with it and that was like a thing that I forgot to route and everything else works well makes me very happy. I just wish that the that this were a little bit louder as it was in the test circuit. Uh, of course you can go to Avnet 100 years to look for more content on this and uh, let's take a look at the project. Oh yeah, actually if you look on here you can see that that ground uh, connection isn't wired to anything on the top or on the bottom. So embarrassing! But that's partly because I was shifting things around in order to try and get these uh, to be centered nicely, <laughs> vaguely nicely in the Avnet logo so that they look as low-key as possible. And while I was shifting those things around after I had already gotten it all routed, I must have forgotten to reroute that back to the ground bin. Ah, so frustrating. I made my own personal um, a tiny footprint for this and you can see the whole thing on the project which we'll take a look at now so i'm going to turn it off because it's very quietly beeping at me <laughs> um yeah so here we go through all of the components of the circuit including the switch these are these really nice little right angle smd switches from sparkfun uh buttons 
buzzers. Now, some of these things I could order from Newark, which is another part of Avnet, and I would like to make the whole thing use Newark parts. The at tinies did come from Newark because those are pretty standard. But things like buttons and switches, I ran with ones that I'd already used from SparkFun. Uh, same with the LEDs. I've used their little um, blue SMD LEDs before, and it's worked really well. These green ones look really nice. Got a 330 ohm 330 ohm resistor on there uh, protecting the green LED from current surges. And that's working really nicely. It's very bright. The buzzer is an interesting one because some piezo buzzers have a contact connected so that if you connect it to power and ground, they're usually labeled, uh, then it will give you this shrill alarm, which is great for things like smoke alarms, but not great for things like this, where I want to be able to control the pitch that it's at so that it doesn't sound horrible. Now, I found one from SparkFun that is um, uh, linked in the description, as always. And, oh, you know what? It might be a different one. Let's see. <laughs> ah, this is a different one. That's actually the wrong link. Anyway, so I found a buzzer from SparkFun that is not technically a piezo buzzer, but is a, a different type, and that might be my, why it's more quiet. Um, the LED, I attempted to have it flash along with the beeps. Right now it does kind of an inverted flash with the beeps. When the beeping happens, the power to the LED dips, so it actually goes dimmer for a moment. Um, but I tried to put that in the code and it messed with the timing so that it was a lot slower. So I decided to nix that idea and just have it be on all the time. Now, here are some prototypes that we'll look at in a second. Uh, I'll also show you the AT Tiny programmer that I made for this. And uh, there's some information about how I put the code together. Two key parts. The Morse code machine library from I am Francis D. Really lovely, uh, really easy to use, really easy to adapt to these examples. And based on uh, some of the stuff in here, like CQ, 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 uh, implies to me that this person is a bona fide ham, and that makes me extra happy to include it in this project. <laughs> I also adapted some code by Jeremy S. Cook from this blog post because it turns out that getting the at tiny to produce tones is kind of a pain. Someone has created their own personal sort of simple tone um, <laughs> library for it. An example, simple tones for at tiny on Technobloggy. However, this method does not even work because it doesn't work with the Arduino Uno that I'm using to um, program the at tiny. So since I'm using the Uno with the at mega328, this technique can't be used because the prescaler cannot be set to any power of two. So lots of really interesting little side edge cases here. Uh, really a pain. <laughs> but if you look at the tutorial, I have put together all of my findings, as well as given you the code that I used so that you can have a better experience than I did in that in my opinion, is what Hackster is all about. Um, you can find a demo of it working and being a little louder on the proto board demo unit, prototype. And then some notes about design and fabrication using KiCad to uh, design it and things like that. You can see the previews on JLC PCB, which I wish I had noticed then. They even put little slight beige lines to show you where the connectors are going to be underneath the solder mask, and I did not notice. Details. Okay, and then there's one final piece of this, which is really interesting to me. There's all these different types of at tiny 85 chips. Even within the AT tiny 85, there's a bunch of different packages and also speeds, two different speeds, and then a bunch of different packages for each. And so I got four different types that I'm going to be testing uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks. Here's a couple of my test codes. In fact, um, a blinky sketch and a more blinky sketch, and then the final one. Uh, yeah, so there are, for example, uh, these ones that I've used here, which are an eight pin dip chip uh, package. And 
they are sort of your standard looking at Tiny85 chip that I've always imagined. Uh, and those come in two speeds, 20 megahertz and 10 megahertz. Megahertz? Let me double check that actually. <laughs> yes, 10 and 20 megahertz. And then uh, you have two packages, the 8-pin dip package and a smaller SMD gullwing package where the leads slope down to a flat bottom that you can solder onto a PCB. So I got one, I got a few in uh, both speeds and both packages, so four different types total. And I'm going to be playing around with those, hopefully making a quick little video for you folks. I also got some uh, of these buttons that are the same in through-hole version and SMD version, so that hopefully at least two of these components are going to be through-hole or <laughs> surface mount in the future. Let me now show you a couple of cool little prototypes that I made since our camera is still working. <clears throat> so here's the front and back of the PCB as it is with your little shine through LED that makes me so happy. Go. Oh, did it? Oh, that's a previous version. Uh, as I mentioned, there was some issue with me figuring out that this was not routed. And so the first time I soldered it together, um, it just straight up didn't turn on, of course, because there was no ground connection. And also, the uh, 330 ohm resistors that I ordered were not the 1206 package that I expected, but in fact a much larger chip resistor. And so that uh, entailed a little bit of bodging as well. In this one, the follow-up, I just used a straight up through-hole resistor. It was much easier to solder than having the wrong size of surface mount resistor. Here are my prototypes. Uh, this one was actually designed to also be able to test an ESP8266, but I ended up making a separate project for that. Uh, we have a button, you've got a little LED and a buzzer and stuff. It's hugely messy because this was designed as a sort of universal tester that I'd be able to use with different chips and things. One of these buttons actually isn't wired up correctly at all, so <laughs> it's just kind of ignored. But you've got um, USB power. You've got connectors for um, a three volt button cell battery. I think that this is just a couple of power and ground leads that you can connect directly to a coin cell battery so that you could test the LED and make sure that that was still working. And it's a huge mess, as you can see. <laughs> so this is sort of the first version of this. I love seeing the sort of evolution. And then here was the second version on one of Adafruit's wonderful Permaproto boards, which is a breadboard styled that's got the same exact connections, but it's a proto board. It's wonderful. And I was sort of swapping out different at tiny chips. You can see that I've got this sort of Sharpie marker designation way of telling them apart. And this uh, is a very strange thing going on where different chips, like this one, is the same speed supposedly, but it is it runs much, much more slowly for reasons I cannot define. Very weird. And it doesn't have to do with the power or anything else. I just switch out the chips, even though they're supposedly the same type. And uh, it goes much more slowly. But this is why I've ordered a bunch of <laughs> each type of at tiny chip, because these at tinies that I've been working with are ones that I found around among my things from the last like 10 years or so. So he, who even knows where they came from or what kinds of weird attributes they have. So I'm very excited to have a bunch of new at tiny chips fresh from the factory that will all be the same. <laughs> Whatever that same is, they'll all work the same, hopefully. And yeah, so here is our final, final version. Um, and I may do more versions of this. I think it would be nice. This is my first time using a shine through LED. So it'd be nice to have more distribution across here, maybe two or three SMD LEDs instead of just one. That would require some reworking of the power situation. Uh, what I could also do is play with the thickness of the PCB, which might affect the distribution of light as well. But I actually kind of like it like this. It's pretty bright already. And if I made it thicker, then it would be a lot heavier and less elegant. But also it might diffuse the LED better. I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. Um, maybe some smaller LEDs, but uh, better distributed. However, what you get with that is that it's harder to solder. And I like being able to do this stuff by hand. So for me, 1206 is a really nice size for SMD components. Yeah. Let me 
see if there's anything I've forgotten to mention. I think that's about it. We talked about the buzzer and the resistor size and everything. So happy 100th birthday, Avnet. Um, I've had a lot of trouble, <laughs> a lot of trouble, yes, but also a lot of fun building this. Uh, and I'm looking forward to making some new versions. There's lots more PCB art on the way. I'm really excited about getting to explore that. And yeah, uh, look forward to the next versions of this, which hopefully will sound like something. This one is very, very, very quiet. And go check out uh, the links in the description below. I have uh, the project linked, as well as Centennial Central, which is Avnet's site that's all about the history of the company and what's going on for the Centennial, and then also just avnet.com. Uh, <laughs> yes, to err is to learn. That's exactly how we learn. Um, I know for one that I'm going to be checking my routing much more carefully in the future. I actually have another PCB on my desk right now that I completely forgot to route. Fortunately, it's a decorative PCB and doesn't actually have a, a really an important circuit on it, but... <sighs> It was one of the first ones that I did, so I'm getting better, but like still a little embarrassing to not route the ground wire. At least it's an easy fix, right? And then, hooray, Tariq, thanks for uh, the good wishes. Uh, very excited about this. 100 years, huh? All right. Thanks as always for tuning in. It's great to see you all. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon, and as always, hack on. <laughs>